Today, I'm going to talk about why coding is the next language to learn besides French or English. What a statement, right? Who in that room has learned how to code? Who has, who has heard the, the word coding? All of us, right? Who has written lines of code in his life? Oh, not, wow, OK. OK, hopefully it's going to be still exciting for you guys. <laughs> so, OK. So, yes, I'm going to show you why we should all learn how to code. And believe me or not, in that room, every single of you is going to learn how to code, is going to code eventually. So, as you can see, everybody knows, heard about coding, the word coding, code, programming. Um, so, it's kind of trendy right now. But the reality is that it's extremely, it's quite old, actually, before I was born, definitely. And actually, I would like to go back to that, to this notion, because we think it's pretty new, but it's pretty old. And it's from actually, at least because it was even before, what we call the microprocessor technology revolution. So that happens at the end of 60s, beginning of 70s. So obviously coding is older than that, but it took like its power during that time. So you've all, you've all heard about the first revolution, like the, uh, with the steam machine industrial revolution, the second one with electrification. This is the third one with the microprocessors. What is a microprocessor? So the microprocessor is actually literally, so it's a component in your computer on the motherboard, and this is literally the brain of your computer. This is where the tasks are executed, you know? So in other words, when you run a software, anything, while working on at home, uh, when you send emails, anything you're doing is actually running on this microprocessor. And the microprocessor, just for you to know, it's made with silica. And that's why this area, you know, in uh, the Bay Area in the United States near San Francisco is called Silicon Valley. People don't know that, but it's come for that to remind us that the microprocessor is made with silica. And so, again, this is the brain of your computer. So this is where the tasks are executed. And those tasks are executed because a code is running. A code has been written by someone or a group of, group of people. So in other words, coding is not new. It's pretty old. But now, if you look at us, everybody knows what is coding. People didn't know what coding was like 50 years ago. So what has changed today? What is the difference that now Coding is hot, it's trend, you know, we've seen so many coding classes, we are bringing our kids to coding classes. What is the difference? Well, I believe that the difference is our relationship with technology. What do I mean by that? Here's a picture of us, like a long time ago, that's why it's black and white, and in a public transportation in the morning. What do we do? We are reading newspapers, books, magazines, to be connected with the outside world. So to read about news, or best story, or comics. This is us today. We are in the public transportation, still in the morning, going to work, for instance, but instead of reading newspapers, books, or magazines, we're actually reading our connected device. We are on our tablets, on our cell phone, smartwatch, even. So things have changed, and so we have a new relationship with technology. Technology is around us. I remember Erika said this morning that there is a transformation that changes the way we live, the way we work. Well, we are in that. And actually, I like to say that to touch people, you have to talk to their connected device. And I like to say that because this is actually the source of the transformation, and this is how we transform the way we work, the way we live, and this is how uh, we come up with what we call the digital transformation. Who has heard about digital transformation in the room? Everyone, obviously. So what is a digital transformation? Well, the digital transformation is actually the idea of using digital tools already developed by others that are general enough to be used by any company any f in any field, any domain, any areas, to actually, um, for instance, reach your clients. You know, So you can use... Um, all the social media, YouTube, um, Twitter, Instagram, or Google, or you can use website or emails to reach your clients. And we've been trained to use those tools, okay? But again, we're using tools that are already developed by others. Well, I like to say that the digital transformation is almost over. I mean, it's not entirely true, obviously. But what I mean by that is that we are beyond that. 
we shouldn't think like that. We shouldn't think digital or analytic transformation. So in other words, not only we are using tools that are already been developed by others, digital tools, but we are incorporating what, I like, what we call data, big data. So we don't want only to reach our clients, but we want to understand them. Okay? We want to know them. So for that, we actually collect data from our users, our consumers, our clients, and we analyze this data, big data eventually, so you've heard about that, using this domain that is analytics. And for that, we're actually using or developing algorithm that is literally a sequence of tasks, you know, executed toward answering a question or solving a problem. And for that, at the end of the day, we write code. Yes, we write code. So compared to the digital transformation, in this transformation, coding is really part of it, and this is part of your company, of your work. Why? Because while during the digital transformation, you were actually using tools that have been developed by others, because the tools were general enough to be used for any company, any field, in that case, specific case, when you want to know your clients, when you want to understand them, well, you need to be more custom-made. Your clients are definitely different to clients of another company, or user, consumers, anything. So because of that, you need actually to develop your own tools. And that is why now, in many companies, new people are coming to the place, you know, like software developers, data scientists are coming to teams, you know, to work with you guys, to actually develop those tools, those algorithms, programs. So it's a new culture, it's a new transformation with new people into the place. And I believe that coding is a cornerstone of the digital or analytic transformation. So stay with me. I believe that if you learn a little bit how to code, you will be capable, actually, of better working with the people that are coming to your company, software developer, data scientists. And this is what I'm going to show you today. So what are the progress challenges in that field, you know, in the digital or analytic transformation, and specifically data? And which roles could you play? Because you have a role to play, believe me. So in that field, there are three different areas. The collect of data, the analysis of data, and the storage of this data. So we've made, obviously, huge progress in all those three fields. So we can collect like any, any data we want from anyone. You agree with me? I mean, it's very um, amazing. We actually can analyze data. We made huge progress of that, even though I have to say that we are capable right now of collecting more data than we are capable of analyzing it, which is very interesting. So we need to work on that still. And the storage, yes, we are capable right now of store a huge amount of data, and we can access this data very easily, fast. So there are many roles to, plays, to play, and I believe that you have a role to play between the collect and the analysis. Why? For this reason. When you want to um, answer a question, when you want to solve a problem that you have, you're going to collect some data, and you're going to al analyze this data to answer this question, OK? So software developers, data scientists are going to do the job for you. But there is a but. You have to help them. You have to work closely with them. Why? Because you are, at the end of the day, the only one to know your customer, the only one to know the domain, and you know which kind of data you want to collect. You know how you want to analyze it, because you know what, which kind of answer you're looking for. So we need you, guys. It's very important. So yes, between the collect and analysis, there is this notion of algorithm. You know, how are we going to solve this question? And then there is obviously coding. So in this ecosystem, you have the software developers, obviously, data scientists, machine learning experts eventually, yes, and you. So I want you to believe me when I say that you're going to play a role, like right now, in the near future, in trying to work closely with those scientists and software developers to actually help them to develop or to use the best algorithm to answer the question you want to address. And so I believe that coding will help you. Yes, coding is the next language to learn. So what do I mean by that? If you learn how to code, you're going to understand not only all the technical words, algorithm, to know whether an algorithm is efficient, fast, or you're going to learn about memory, you're going to learn about API. You know, I mean, software developers are talking about that all the time during meetings. May I buy an API? What is, what is that? 
you know? So coding is the way for you to become, what I like to say, power user of those technologies because you're going to learn all the technical words, all the technical technology. You're going to learn the underlying mechanism of new technologies and have a better critical sense. And so who is going to learn how to code? Well, everyone in the company. Don't get me wrong. I don't expect you to become expert. I don't expect you to become software developers. Not at all. If you want, please go ahead. But I don't expect you to do that. I expect you actually to understand, you know, to learn a little bit about coding, just to understand how things are working, just to understand the underlying mechanism, and just to be power users of those technologies. So all employees, managers, leaders, because you want to be able to talk with people who are in the tech, you know, and you're going to work closely with them. And people in executive committee, I believe in that. Because people in executive committee, they need, at the end of the day, to make decisions. To make decisions, you need to estimate the cost of the decision, the risk of the decision. And considering the fact that now a company is innovative, is novel by using, developing new digital tools, new technologies, well, you need to learn a bit about that, just to develop your passion about that. So why? Well, the why is here. Decision making, as I said, you need at the end of the day to make decision. How do you want to make decision if you don't understand the underlying mechanism? How do you want to make a decision if you don't really understand the in and out of this like digital ecosystem? All the words, all the um, you know, uh, all the challenges that, that are behind, you know, the risk that you might take. Then communication, as I said, you want to be able to communicate with software developers, data scientists. You need to speak the same language as them. You need to develop this trust between you and them. And the way to do that is to understand their ecosystem. Coding is the way to capture that. Performance, obviously. Innovation. If you learn a bit how to, how to code, you will learn more about this ecosystem and you will be more innovative because you will get more ideas, you know, on how we can make progress. And I believe in that. And obviously understand, just understand the world, understand how the world is working, how the world is changing, you know. I believe that it's a strong statement that coding is a skill for the next generation leaders. And this is something that I strongly believe in because I believe that leaders need to project themselves to the future. And one way of doing that is to understand the future, understand right now the new technologies that's going to build the future. For that, well, you need to understand the technical ecosystem and the coding. So now, how to learn? I mean, I hope I convinced you, but how could you learn that? Well, there are different ways depending on who you are, how you are, your personality, and how you like to work on a daily basis. First, by yourself. Online, there are websites, tutorials you can use, you know, um, with your own timeline. There is obviously like groups, like online groups or real life groups. And you all learn about like meetups that are very uh, interesting when learning, You're, like all together helping each other. So it's a community work. There are also something that you might not know. It's universities actually are working hard to offer like camp, summer camp, like four weeks, for instance, in Harvard to actually learn how to code in any language. And the one-to-one, -one, so this is something that I develop personally because I believe that I can coach people one-to-one -to, -one to teach them how to code, to, to teach them all the technical words to be more comfortable in that field. And finally, I like this sentence. I think that we should all learn how to code, to think, to do it like a developer. So I like this quote from Steve Jobs. He said that more than 10 years ago, he said, I think everybody in this country should learn how to program a computer because it teaches you how to think. I think it summarized very nicely what I try to explain you guys, which is like coding will help you to build the future because the developers, the data scientists, are going to be actually the architects of the future. And I want you to help them because I believe in diversity and I believe that all together we can make the world better. And I would finish with the motto of the Octave this year, which is be yourself and be part of a changing world. So again, I don't want you to be someone you don't want to be. I don't, want you, um, I don't expect you to be an expert of software developers, but I want you to be part of this changing world and to help others and to be part of the, to build a new world and for a better world for everyone. Thank you.